All right, everyone. So this week, I thought we'd do some really fun, creative things with custom brushes here inside Photoshop. And what we're going to do is actually take this image, and we're going to apply a very interesting brush effect to give it a little bit more pizzazz, uh, maybe some interesting color and lighting effects, just to give it a little bit more energy to it, in a sense. So let's create our brush that we're going to use. And we're actually going to create a halftone brush. So let's create a new document, go under File to New, and we're going to do a very small 2 by 2 inch at 100 dpi. Here we have that. Now, let's minimize this window. We'll get back to this image in a, mim in a minute when we finish creating our brush here. So in this file, I want to convert this layer for Smart Filters. So I'm simply going to go under the Filter menu, go to Convert for Smart Filters, which is basically it's turning it into that layer into a smart object is really all it's doing. So if I do that, you can see it turns into a smart object icon, and I'm going to double click that to open up that smart object. And we're going to create a very small gradient inside the smart object file here. So let's select our gradient tool, go into the gradient picker, and we're going to choose the second one right here, which is the foreground to transparent. And because black is our current foreground color, it's going from black to transparent, which is fine. And I want to use a radial gradient, not the linear, but the second one right here, which is a radial. And just clicking in the center and dragging out just a little ways, not all the way to the edge, but just a little, about halfway between the middle and the outer edge. So uh, click that and release it. It gives us a very small gradient there. So that's our smart object. I'm going to close this, save the changes, and it will show up in our main file. Then we're going to apply the filter. Let's go under Filter, go to Pixelate. Color halftone. Now I'm going to click default here. You can see by default, this comes up with a max radius of 8, and you've got these settings here for each of the channels to offset the halftone dot pattern. I don't want it to do that. I'm going to actually set all of these to 0. Let's go to 0, tab, 0, tab, 0, tab. Now, change this max radius to 10, and then we'll hit OK. And you can see what happens is that it creates a very uniform looking dot pattern. Well, here in the center, those dots are a little close to each other. They're actually touching. They're actually overlapping each other. I don't quite want it to do that. I want it to be a little bit more spaced. So, because this is a smart object with smart filters applied, I don't have to go all the way back to the beginning and start over. I can actually go back into the smart object here and just adjust the gradient here. I'm going to actually bring up my Levels dialog by pressing Command or Control L. And I'm just going to take the middle gray slider here and just push it over to the left just a little, until that middle d really dark area is not so dense. Just about like that. Hit OK, close the document, save the changes, and it will update in my file, and you can see those dots are a little bit more spaced out, they're not, so, they're not touching each other so much. So now let's create our brush. Go ahead here to my toolbar, select the Marquee tool, click inside the white area, you can see it selects everything but those dots, but it is in fact the dots that I want to be selected. So I'm simply going to under, go under the Select menu, go to Inverse, and now those dots are selected. Go under the Edit menu, down to Define Brush Preset. So let's give it a name, Half Tone. Lovely. And our brush is created. So I'm going to minimize this file. We don't need it for now. Let's bring back up our little party girl image here. And let's apply our settings, or our really cool dazzling brush. Let's create a new layer and we're going to get the rectangular marquee tool and draw a small rectangular shape right along the bottom here. Not all the way, not the full length across, just a partial part of the way. And inside that selection we're going to actually apply a gradient. Let's go and select our gradient tool again, click on the gradient preview there to bring up the gradient editor. And I want this gradient right here, this kind of multicolored rainbow looking gradient. So I'll select that and hit OK. Holding down my Shift key, I'm going to drag from the top of the selection here down to the bottom. And we are obviously still set on the radial gradient from before. I don't want that. So I'm going to actually undo that. Let's go up here and select the linear gradient tool. And let's try that again. Hold down the Shift key, drag from top to bottom. There it is. OK, deselect that. Now, let's go and get the brush cre we created. But, before we do that, let's apply an effect to this layer. I'm actually double click on the icon to bring up the layer styles. And apply a, actually no, I want to apply an outer glow. And in this case, the default 
cheesy little yellow off white color will work fine. Let's increase the size though a little bit, uh, somewhere around 30-ish, like that. And we'll hit OK, and we'll change the blend mode of this layer to hard light, so it has some blending in going on there. Now let's select our brush, and we're not going to use the brush tool, because we're not going to be painting with color, we're actually going to be smearing this particular shape, so we're going to use the smudge tool. So I'm going to click and select that, go and find our brush we created, which is right here. So with it selected, go in here, we want to make sure that the mode is set to normal, and that the strength of the smudge tool is set at 100%. Now, if you remember, I did a 3D tubes tutorial using this very sim uh, similar technique. And you just want to make sure that these settings are in place. We're going to bring up the brush options. And we don't want to have any of these checked. You don't want to have the smoothing on or anything like that. So I'm going to uncheck all these, except in this case, I'm going to check on shape dynamics because I am going to use the pin pressure here. You can see this is the control set the pin pressure. I am, in fact, using a, pr uh, a pressure sensitive tablet which will affect the size as I'm painting my brush. Now, do you need a pressure sensitive tablet to do this technique? No, you do not. But I do it just because it gives me an interesting result. You can certainly play with any of these settings to come up with very similar type of results. So, that's that. That is set. Let's close this and let's go in here and start painting. Well, I'm actually make the brush a little bit smaller by using my left bracket key. So it's just a little bit smaller than the overall height of this gradient, which is right about there. Actually, I'm going to go a little bit smaller than that. Right about like that. Okay. So now, all I gotta do is just click in any area of this gradient and just start clicking and dragging. And you can see, because of the multi lines of this brush, it's giving me a very interesting effect right there. So let's just kind of go like that. And maybe come in here in the bottom and just kind of do that. Oop, zoomed out there. So you can see, if I double click to zoom in here, well actually let's bring, because of the nature of that brush, it's giving me a very interesting effect. It's smearing multiple layers of color, and those lines are giving me an interesting result in the end as well. So if I've got my lines drawn, now all I need to do is just kind of get rid of this box down here. I'm actually going to distort this box. I'm going to bring up my free transform and press the command or control T. I'm going to control or right click directly on the object and bring up distort and drag each one of these corner handles down in very different positions and increase the perspective here to, to give those lines there a little bit more interest into the direction they're going. Just press enter and there I am done. So we've taken that halftone brush and smeared a gradient and give us a very interesting effect and as you can see it retained the glow and the blending mode that we applied to that original gradient shape. So you can see you can, the possibilities here of taking a very simple shape with a gradient and smearing all kinds of weird, really weird and interesting designs that you wouldn't be able to do with a regular brush. But by using that smudge tool in a very creative way, you can get a very interesting effect.